So this topic might get me a little riled up. <laughs> I had a teacher, an English teacher in the seventh and eighth grade, Mr. Males, Fulton Junior High School, 1980s. And I don't even think he knew anything about us as students. Which is like the opposite of what I was. But the way he taught was so unusually profound. Anyway, he used to throw out these adages. Oh, when I was knee high to a beetle bug, when I was knee high to a grasshopper. But the one that's always stuck with her was, well, there's two. One was, the only things you have to do are death and taxes. What well, was said better than that, but. Um, the other one, and it's played in my head for 30 years, 30 plus, is the phrase, nothing's all good and nothing's all bad. And when you really come to terms with that phrase, you realize that you should just leave well enough alone because everything has a good side and a bad side and they're often balanced out and there must be something more intelligent than me at the center of the universe. So when we go with this nothing is all good, nothing is all bad idea, you realize that essentially nothing is measurable. Because if one thing can be supremely good or supremely bad, such as sexual intercourse, marriage, parenthood. Okay, he's just going to go on and on. She's so impatient. Just sit and think of all the things that are important to you. Such as having a job. I mean, nothing's all good and nothing's all bad. I mean, we could break it down and say child sexual abuse is all bad. This is true. But many blessings will come from it. But you didn't know that. So it's all bad. Yes, it's all bad. There are things that are all bad. And there are things that are all good, such as listening. Listening to other people. Some of you would be shocked at how rarely you do it. Oh, you have all kinds of ideas in your head about what God wants and who God is and how people should act, but you don't look around you and listen. It's not me, folks. <coughs> so going with this nothing's all good, nothing's all bad theme... God is asking anyone to try and accurately argue why 
unless it is truly decidedly wicked, such as abuse. Why any human being or church would advocate that something is demonic. If there are a large section of people who are doing it, who are not demonic in any way, shape, or form. There are even people saying that church trunk or treats are demonic. If you are listening to someone that cannot discern that almost anything can be innocent when entertained by the innocent. Then you are being deceived. So for a while after my divorce, he had me going out a lot. And I would go to pubs, um, once a strip club, um, pretty much wherever I was invited. And each and every time I would go out, I would over drink a bit. And I would find people to love. People like that totally needed to hear from someone like me that just needed to talk about their problems and have someone listen, have someone kind of guide them with words of wisdom, love. And uh, sometimes I'd go out several times a week and almost each and every time I would come home having hugged and cried with someone who felt so blessed to have been where they were at. And then I would cry because I thought they were the most delightful human beings I had ever met and that God had sent them to me. But she didn't know it for a fact. But she knew it in her soul. And it ends up that the good Lord was sending her out to pubs and clubs and whatnot to do spiritual battle and meet people whose souls needed some light. And yet there are Christians out there who would say what she did was shameful. How could she be a prophet? If she wasn't in such a depressed state, I'd have her go out almost every night right now because I know what a few minutes around a light like the woman you're looking at can do for a person. Oh, how she can love you no matter I feel by talking about it, he's making a mockery of it. <sighs> there are so many people who just need a smile. Just a, hey, we're all in this together. And it's not like make-believe, like it's a true need for them. There's no one there. <laughs> A 
Anyway, the point of making this was that there are so many Christians looking at the planks in other people's eyes that God is about to lose his mind. <laughs> And he's saying pretty much if you take a stance on anything, such as people should not celebrate Halloween, it's demonic. The second you say that to yourself, you are judging other people. And boy, is he obsessed with that verse about... Do not judge the plank in someone else's eye until you take out the plank in your own. There is not one of you without sin. And if someone is going out to celebrate Halloween to delight their children, and celebrate their community. There is no wickedness there. Nothing is all good and nothing is all bad. And I sent Jesus Christ so that those with goodness inside them could do what I needed them to do, which is follow their own soul. As a matter of fact, I kind of want everyone to follow their own soul. But see, some people can follow their soul for a long time and it leads them to all kinds of crazy places. But then they ask my son, Jesus Christ, into their heart and oh my goodness. He's trying to get into complicated subject matter now and I'm, well... There was supposed to be a possible deliverance, but uh, she's sitting here making videos. I can't even think about this. All right, everybody. Please love your neighbor as yourself, and your neighbor is anyone God has put in your way. Anyone. Even people you can't stand have something redeemable inside them. Pity is a beautiful form of love, as a matter of fact. Truly, I tell you, we should... Pity the wicked, for nothing is pure in their path. But truly, I tell you, for the righteous, everything, and I mean everything, is pure in their path. Do not judge your neighbor, my friend lest you imagine that you're not a sinner and they are. I love all my little sinners. Did you get that? I love all of my, my, Team Jesus. 
I love all of my little sinners. And I admire extra those who try hard not to sin. But I love all my little sinners. And truth be told, a lot of my really sinful little sinners, I have a soft spot in my heart for them. Because most of them have a reason. Love. Listen. And listen again. Amen.